Welcome back to the Hardball and our politics fix tonight. Tonight's roundtable, MSNBC political analyst Michelle Bernard, Tim Grieve of Politico, and Dana Milbank, who was constantly on my television screen today all day long. Dana, every time I looked at General Petraeus and Andrew, what's his name, Ryan Crocker, there you were. Let me ask you about this, uh, this whole question. Let's all look at this. Now, I have no opinion on this, surprisingly. Here's something that John McCain said today about the role of al-Qaeda, how it fits into the various different screens groups over there, the Shia, the Sunni. Let's see how he ultimately got it right. There are numerous threats to security in Iraq and the future of Iraq. Do you still view al-Qaeda in Iraq as a major threat? Uh, it is still a major threat, though it is uh, certainly not as major a threat as it was, say, 15 months certainly ago. Certainly not an obscure sect of, uh, of the Shiites all over no. Uh, no, or sir. Sunnis or anybody else. Uh, Al-Qaeda continues to try to assert themselves in Mosul, is that correct? It is, Senator. As you saw on the, on the uh, chart, the area of operation of Al-Qaeda has been greatly reduced in terms of controlling areas uh, that it controlled as little as a year and a half ago. Well, I have to ask you, is that, is that everybody's jumping all over that? All the Democrats are jumping on the guy saying he made a mistake again. He doesn't understand al-Qaeda is a Sunni uh, operation, never had anything to do with Shia. He made a little bit of a mistake and then quickly corrected it. Is this worthy of our attention? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's worthy of our attention because, you know, there, there's still also that unmistakable picture in everyone's minds from a week or two ago with Senator McCain having to have Senator Lieberman correct him. I mean, his uh, lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call him his lifeline. I think he what knows what he's doing, but he does. He wants to be a millionaire. What do they call it? The lifeline? I don't know. I think they did. Let me go to Dana on you. You were so intent there within the, within uh, a few steps of, Je of Senator McCain. Was that a boo-boo or what? Or not a boo-boo? I wish I knew it was on camera, Chris. I would have waved a hardball insignia or something like that. But well, yes, it, of course it was a, a mistake. You could see it uh, 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 very clearly there. And uh, as you've, you guys have pointed out, uh, it, has, it compounds the meaning uh, because of his problem earlier. Now, fortunately, uh, for Obama, uh, for McCain, I caught Obama mixing up uh, Iran and Iraq later in the day. So they better be careful how far uh, uh, they go with right. this one. Over it wasn't a very good day for McCain overall. He was, uh, I, I thought, sort of listless in the questioning, and then he actually uh, uh, hightailed it out of that hearing before it was uh, it was less than halfway over. Well, uh, let's rate them then. Let's get into the politics here. Let me go, Tim Grieve. I, I, I have to ask you. I thought that Hillary had a very good question there, Senator Clinton. When the, the two gentlemen, Petraeus and Crocker. Why doesn't the United States Congress, the Senate in particular, get to vote on whether we make this long-term commitment to Iraq instead of letting the president, who's leaving office in six months, uh, do it this July by himself? That's right. She made that point. She made the point, uh, or got, got Crocker to admit the point, that the Iraqis are going to get to vote on it. It, yeah. dovetail, it dovetailed well, very we're well. teaching democracy but not practicing it? That's right. It dovetailed perfectly with, with what Levin was doing earlier in the day, which was saying, look, the Iraqis are, uh, are, are getting fat and happy on their, uh, on their oil revenues. They have a surplus, right? But they have a surplus, and if you're an outdoor construction worker in California sitting there working on, uh, you know, watching this on TV, I, I think you'd be pretty upset. You know, when you ride a subway in a place like Philly or New York and it's a little old, then we could use a $100 billion influence and, you know, infusion of infrastructural investment. I mean, we're over there putting together their electric power grid, we're putting together the school system. We are. What's it? What kind of deal with we got? Look, I think today was the day for Senator Obama, Senator Clinton, and Senator McCain to show their commander in chief bona fides. I think it was a pretty mediocre day, really, for all three of them no, on the Barack issue of good. Iraq. Okay, let's get another opinion, because I thought Barack <laughs> was elegant at the end. I thought Senator Clinton was very good. I thought Barack was very good at raising the two questions. This parade of horribles that keeps us in there, can we deal with it in a reasonably short run, or are we going to be stuck there forever? Can we ever guarantee that al-Qaeda won't come in there ever again sometime soon? Can we ever stop the influence of Iran on its neighboring country? Right. Th those were good lawyerly These questions. These are quicksand questions. They were quicksand questions. They were good lawyerly questions. But I thought Obama come on, came off looking uh, tired and a little yeah. tentative and, and not as presidential as, as he probably wanted to. Is this the makeup department? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody it's, all, say, it's all it's all cosmetic. It's all cosmetic. Colonel Jacobs on the earlier program, what David was doing. What do you think, Dana, about that? Since you were close enough to notice, that let's do the cosmetic look at the three candidates today. Who was the most uh, well turned out? <laughs> since that's the most important thing. You write uh, comms like they, this, buddy. Don't, don't look, pretend you're above they this. All look, they all look dreadfully tired. Uh, Clinton and Obama were sling uh, glances at the clock throughout the whole thing, and they were both uh, chewing gum. Uh, Obama was doing a lot of rocking in his seat. Uh, 
I uh, couldn't observe McCain again because he darted out of there uh, too fast uh, uh, to judge anything. But if I were if I were giving you a scorecard on this, I think uh, legislatively uh, Clinton uh, was the finest, and, uh, and uh, McCain had quite a weak day, and Obama was in the middle. Yeah, I thought that uh, it really takes testimony. I mean, it takes uh, self-confidence and a willpower to sit and listen for hours of other people asking questions of somebody else. It sure does. But you know what Clinton did is she, is she got on the table the, the key the key thing, which the was the constitutional role. Of the Senate. Well, the constitutional role of the Senate. The other thing she did is she got Petraeus to admit that not only do they not have a timetable for, for withdrawing troops, but they don't even have a timetable for deciding when they're going to have a timetable. They also don't have a uh, the, the conditions that they know they're going to lead to those decisions. And Carl Levin kept asking three months, four months. Give me a month. He never got that answer. Uh, these guys do have a very short leash and what you're allowed to say. These guys are under orders. As General Petraeus, the great man, said, your job is to take the hill with the resources you have. He's under orders. He that's is right. not a politician. He shouldn't be defending the policy. He should be executing it. And that's it. Now he's put out there on point to defend Bush's policy. Bush should have been sitting in that chair today, the President of the United States, who set the policy. We'll be right back with a roundtable for more of the politics fix. Watching Hardball, only on MSNBC.